Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. This is XRPM in South Africa. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me just inform you that I am not financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is only for the educational purposes. So, ladies and gentlemen, crypto influencer Jack the Ripper shows his excitement with a bold claim that a hundred XRP could be worth one million dollars this is from influencer jerk the ripper he says he shows his excitement with a bold claim that 100 xrp could be worth one million i agree when we when we check the the partnership uh, XRP uh, Ripple have central banks CTPC CBDC yes it's possible hundred XRP could worth one million dollar in the near future and we are about to get there we are about to get there let the lawsuit finish let ripple win the lawsuit first you will see what we are talking about so the statement challenges skeptics and encourages individual to consider potential for creating a generational wealth this is the crypto influencer is not me the guy called jack the rippler shows his, his excitement when he think about uh, when he analyze the the partnership ripple have when he analyze how xrp operate he stand and says 100 xrp who could wait could be worth 1 million so that's why now um the xrp i'm saying xrp yes could go to the higher price I believe him based on the um, uh, 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 the partnership that the ripple have the central banks around the world the governments ripple obtained license to operate in Singapore yes it is possible 100 XRP could be worth 1 million dollars now while the price prediction should be approached with caution, Jack the Ribbler optimis, oh, optimism reflects the enduring belief in the near future growth of the XRP. XRP is the most important asset to have, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to fight poverty by XRP, then you will thank me later. So now, uh, the CTO of Ripple, Chief Technology Officer of Ripple, David Schwartz, talk about how Beto helped fa uh, facilitating billions in XRP remittance without operating in USA. Yes, we know that uh, uh brett gallenhaus used to say this that 90 percent of the xrp transactions are not in usa they are outside of usa so now usa including gary gangsler cannot kill the xrp's existence because xrp can exist 
without the USA. So, ladies and gentlemen, Vito is the Mexican based cryptocurrency exchange. Vito just convert, uh, convert, uh, uh, re uh, received XRP into Mexican peso and makes the domestic Mexican payment to the recipient. Do you see how the X, how easy uh, XRP uh, makes the payment? So, the U.S. Treasury Department of a Fiscal Services joined the Fed now. Remember, next week we will see the Fed now going live. Next week we will we will see the Fed now going live. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget that the Fed now will be live on the 1st of July. And then I, I'm going to share you this video. I'm going to share this video with you that talk about the Fed now, how the Fed now will go live. Ladies and gentlemen, please have a listen to this video. For the launch, during the first week of April, the Federal Reserve will begin a formal certification process for participants for the launch of the FedNow service. The early adopters will complete a customer testing and certification program where they will be preparing to send live transactions through the system. Now, this certification process, it will encompass a comprehensive testing curriculum with defined expectations for operational readiness and network experience. Then come June, and this is June, the Federal Reserve and certified participants will conduct production validation activities to confirm readiness for the July launch. Question is, will anybody use the service at launch? Yes, many early adopters have declared their intent to begin using the service in July, including a diverse mix of financial institutions of all sizes, the largest processors, and of course, the U.S. Treasury some super big news for you. One of the biggest announcements in FedNow, and I want to say the biggest announcement since FedNow service itself was announced, just came out. The Federal Reserve announced the addition of multiple organizations to the FedNow service pilot program, new ones that are joining the FedNow service program. These participants, they're joining the already established 120 other organizations that are already in the program's testing phase, which began earlier this year and will continue until the launch of the FedNow service in 2023. And out of these new participants, one of them really stands out. Who? The U.S. Department of the Treasury's Bureau of Fiscal Service. That's the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Bureau of Fiscal Service. To me, this is the biggest announcement in FedNow since the announcement of the FedNow Service. Why? Well, think about it. Who is the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Bureau of Fiscal Service? They are the government agency that, among many other things that they do, they provide the central payment services to the American public on behalf of government agencies. And they operate the federal government's collection and deposit system. Just how many payments are we talking about potentially here, Professor? Well, if we go look at some of the data available on the internet, you can go check this yourself on the Bureau of Fiscal Service, and we look at data through fiscal year 2021, the Bureau of Fiscal Service processed nearly 202 million EFTPS transactions valued at 3.56 trillion in tax revenue. They processed nearly 81.4 million transactions worth nearly 210 billion through pay.gov. They securely dispersed 1.7 billion payments, totaling more than 6.4 trillion, and they did it 100% of the time. <laughs> That's a lot of payments. Let me break this down for you a little more. If you get a federal government benefit payment like Social Security or an electronic fund tax payment system like, oh, I don't know, IRS tax returns, then you have benefited from a U.S. Department of Treasury's Bureau of Fiscal Service payment. Well, what's this really going to mean to you? As a financial institution, as a consumer, it's going to be huge. And the truth is, I can't say for sure because there's no official announcement that has been made by the Bureau as to what this will mean. But I predict, I believe this means that your bank and your credit union needs to get on the FedNow network, that it will enable you to be able to receive government payments like IRS returns, Social Security payments, or do you guys remember back those electronic impact payments? Those were distributed by the Bureau of Fiscal Service. Could you imagine if you could get them faster? Can you imagine what it means to the payments industry, let alone the country, to have the U.S. Treasury Bureau of Fiscal Service having the ability to distribute FedNow instant payments? Go from getting a payment in a day or two to getting it in seconds. Again, this is my opinion, but this is a game changer, and to me it's the biggest announcement in the FedNow service, or really in payments, in years.